My name is David Grindle. I'm one of your synodically authorized ministers uh, for the Crossroads Conference, and I'm happy to welcome you to today's worship here at Trinity. Um, I hope everyone is doing well as we continue to work our way through um, this unusual time of worshiping together in this fashion. Uh, are there any announcements that uh, need to be shared this morning or whenever you're watching this uh, video? I have one that um, to just say that at last summer, a group of us had a wonderful discussion at the Fort Herkimer Pavilion about the movie and book, Just Mercy. Um, we had enjoyed the uh, discussion, which went over an hour, uh, that we decided we wanted to meet again in August. Uh, watch for more details about what we're going to discuss and what that date is in this week's weekly announcement because um, I don't have that in my head right now, but um, it was a blessing to be together, and I know it will be for continued discussion. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? I have just one announcement. This is Rose. Um, while you're, you guys are listening to Pastor, I'm going to be making donuts for breakfast, so... <laughs> If you guys drive fast enough, you can come down here for donuts. I'm only being funny. Well, I'm Rose, you, you hit on the wrong thing to laugh with me about, because I can make some time between Baldwinsville and Herkimer if there's a donut involved. I'm not in Herkimer. I'm in Ephrata. That's fine. I'll find it. I'll sniff it out. I promise you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> They're easy to make you by the... You buy the little package of uh, biscuits that you can get at Walmart. Yep. Snap them open, put them in the microwave for 20 seconds so they start activating, and then you deep fat fry them, and they are awesome. So I'm going to unmute myself so you don't hear me going yum, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of appropriate for today's reading, so you enjoy those. Okay, bye. Well, I'm going not to say goodbye. I'm just going to mute myself. All righty. Well, with that, let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come together rejoicing 
for nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither life nor death, not prejudice nor power, not our grief nor our fears, not the wrongs we have done nor the wrongs done against us. Love comes to us still. When nothing feels certain, this truth remains. The Spirit is our constant companion, ushering us toward life. Let every heart be lifted. The kingdom of God is so close, nothing can keep love from enfleshing among us. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know. And nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, or the Lord has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and it's late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, we've nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down in the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, today's reading, you know, it's the only thing that is told in all four Gospels. Not even the birth or the crucifixion is in all four Gospels. This story is so important, every Gospel writer felt it needed to be included. And if you look at the four, they are remarkably similar, which is unusual when something appears in multiple Gospels. Not only is a large crowd fed with a small amount of food, but it also even begins in a similar way. Each telling of the story starts with trying to get away. In Matthew, 
Jesus has just learned of the beheading of John the Baptist. In Mark, he's trying to get the disciples away from the crowds that had been mobbing them. Luke is a combination of the two. The disciples have been out doing their first mission work and learn of the beheading of John the Baptist and tell Jesus, and then they go to the other side of the lake. And then finally in John, he's just been finished being interrogated in the temple for healing someone on the Sabbath and takes the disciples away to rest. In each case, he and the disciples are physically and emotionally drained. They've been doing God's work among God's people, and they need a break. And we've all been there. We all need a break from working or from negotiating the emotional trauma of the death of someone we love. And in those times, we've no more to give. All Jesus and the disciples want is rest, but that's not going to happen. The people follow them. In John, it even says that Jesus and the disciples cross the Sea of Tiberias. And that's the Roman name for the Sea of Galilee. So to put it in something we can understand, that's like Jesus being on the south shore of Oneida Lake and crossing to the north shore. Because they're about the same width, those two. And the people followed. But maybe not in a boat. They, they walked all the way around. Jesus might have been done for the day, but the people weren't. There was still healing, preaching, and loving that needed to be done. And so they do that. Even in their tiredness, they respond to the needs of the people. And the day finally ends. And the disciples, God love them. They think everybody's going to leave and go get food. And they'll finally have peace and rest. John even tells Jesus, you make them leave. It's dinner time. And this is part one of our lesson. After a full day of doing God's work and the disciples want the people to leave, Jesus says, no, you feed them. And I've often wondered what John's reaction might have looked like to Jesus. Excuse me? we barely have enough food for ourselves and you think I'm going to feed that group of people. And if we did, I'm tired. I have used all my nice voice for the day. I can't do any more people. Part one of the lesson is that we don't get to choose when God uses us to help other people. God doesn't have a sign-up sheet or an online portal for volunteer slots, and I'll take this 15 minutes of being nice to neighbors. God uses us to serve God's needs on God's time, on God's schedule. And on that truth, we can all identify with the feelings that the disciples probably had. All too often, people have needed something, and I helped begrudgingly. I might have been smiling on the outside, but inside I was not. I was bitter, annoyed, and wondering why it was me. They had other friends and family. I knew it. But instead, I'm helping them move. I'm giving them a ride. I'm listening to them whine about their heartache again. Because when they needed God to provide, I was the vessel God chose. Being a disciple in the feeding of the 5,000 is not really the character that any of us wants to play very often. And sometimes we do turn, that, that, turn down that role, even when maybe we shouldn't. Sometimes we're so tired that we get told to feed them and look Jesus stone cold in the face and say no. And we've all done it. It's an equal confession and condemnation. And at that moment comes the second part of the lesson. Because in that moment, 
we experience the amazing part of grace. Because when we refuse to play the role of the disciple, God, through infinite grace, recasts us from feeder to the person being fed. Suddenly, we're not the vessel pouring, we're the vessel receiving. Jesus realizes that he is fully God and fully human, and we are only human and can only act that way. Jesus knows that our petulance needs as much grace as the next sinner, and that grace is always offered. I mean, it, it makes me feel like dirt when I think about it. In my desire to think only of myself, Jesus can think only of me too. So when we sit and join the crowd that needs the feeding, Jesus feeds us from the plenty that is God's grace. When we think of the people that follow Jesus as the disciples, we often have an image of people from Renaissance paintings with halos. But we really should get our image of those people from a mirror. Those disciples weren't perfect people. They were just people like you and like me called by God to a task which they didn't always do willingly or happily. Each of us needs that refreshing grace, and it comes in many ways, but it always comes when God knows we need it the most. As we all continue to wrestle with the world we find ourselves in, we find ourselves tired, I don't want to give love to people who refuse to help control the virus. I don't want to give love to people of the opposite political view, because if I see one more politic ad already, and we ain't got an election till November, I'm done with it. I don't want to give love to people that I've been stuck inside with for the last five months. We can be and will be petulant children of God. Thankfully, the Son of God is not. The Son of God looks at us as he looked at the 5,000. The Son of God looks at us as he looks at the rich, looked at the rich man who refused to sell everything. He looks at us and loves us with a love that can fill us to overflowing so that we have to offer it to others once more. We have developed a thought that love and forgiveness are a fixed amount, and from humans, they often are. But from God, there's always plenty, and there's always someone in need, and there's always enough love and grace to go around. It's God's work through our hands, and let us trust in that. Amen. I'd like to offer a great thanks to my lovely wife uh, for assisting with the hymns today. Our hymn of the day is uh, in ELW number 453. If you have a hymnal at home, it's there. If not, I've got the music right here for you on the screen. So our, please join in. <laughs>
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. O oh God, our Savior, bless your church around the world, where believers must be isolated from one another, be present through your gracious word. Give to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders wisdom for their task in this challenging time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, creator of a wondrous earth, Protect the glories of your seas and land. Replenish groundwater supplies. Refresh lakes and ponds. Send rain where there is drought and shelter forests from the wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, sovereign of the world, form the leaders of nations to strive for justice for all. Guide our government strengthen the world's democracies and bring an end to racism in our society our and show our elected officials how to govern with integrity hear us O oh god your mercy is great O oh god storehouse of forgiveness and goodness visit all who face the coronavirus give us lord of life a vaccine Assist all who face eviction from their residence and insecurity in life and bring wholeness to those suffering in body and spirit. We pray especially for those we name aloud and in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. Is great. Heavenly Father, please be with Rose and her family on the death of Amy. Comfort them as they mourn. Show them your grace as they learn to live their life in this new way. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those prayers too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Amen. hallowed be your name. Amen. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come. Your will, your be, will done be done on earth, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, us our sins, sins as we forgive, we forgive those, those who sin against us. Against us. Against us. Oh. Save us Save from us the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, the power, and the glory are yours, are yours. Now, and now, and now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. So now we can play that Zoom moment where we offer peace on top of each other and get embarrassed. <laughs> Good to be together. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. As you go on your way, May Christ be with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 546 in your ELW to be your presence.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David, for a lovely service. <laughs>